Hello everyone, Lance Curve here once again. I welcome you back. I want to say how I enjoy the shows we do in the evening and I appreciate the support. It's really breathing a lot of life into this community that we're building. You see, I don't have to be out there with millions and millions of people, but just to have our community and our family together as we do. And I love to see how you guys communicate with each other, swap your phone numbers, talk. It makes me feel really good. And I wanted to say that first. But this is just a passing thought. This is nothing long. I'm going to do a lot of these that are shorter. And I will put this on YouTube, but I'm going to speak in a very coded manner. You could also look at the banner that I have yet to create that will t tell you pretty much what I'm talking about. But a thought hit me today, and it's always hit me, right? But I thought to myself, or I asked myself the question, when did black manhood expire? When was the expiration date of black manhood that no one told us passed by and transpired? Because evidently, the way that we are living now in the world that we're living in today, this is not by chance. And I remember many years ago, and not even just many years ago, just up until a short time ago, that we had many aggressive trolls, evidently and obviously from the gay community who attacked me and said, there is no agenda. There is no agenda. Oh, come on, y'all. For such a community that, that is really small, and I'm not even going to say community, but those who, who show out in the name of that, in, in America especially, it's still very small. But look at the influence that this pseudo-falsified group has. If you want to do what you do in your bedroom, nobody is bothering you, nobody's questioning you, nobody's coming against you because nobody's going to know. Why is it that we have to know? Why is it that a way has been made for you to unify based on an act? Really, when you think about it, they do stuff, but they want to compare it to the American African community and the black community, black African community worldwide. We are born with our melanin. We are born with features that are so distinguishable that you can't get away. I mean, there are some of us who are in denial of who we are. We bleach our skin, we straighten our hair, we get plastic surgery to take away our wide nose and make our lips thinner, whatever it takes. Those are in denial because we are really a messed up people mentally. This, this worldwide demon, and again, I speak in code, has really messed up the world. Seriously, when you think about it. This worldwide demon has really messed up the world. And when you really look at it, this global demon despises nature. Anything natural, it despises. Think about it. It's not only the fact that they want to change us in our desires that come naturally. Me as a man for a woman and a woman for a man. But down to the very foods we eat, GMO foods and why they're better. But they don't absorb the same way into the body on a molecular level. So what if it has a longer shelf life? That's you thinking for, about profit. Well, if it can stay on the shelf longer, there's a higher chance that someone will purchase it if it looks, looks fresh. That's sick. You pick your fruit, your vegetables, and you eat it. You see, a lot of these store owners don't want to provide fresh, ripe fruits because ripe fruits spoil faster and it has less of a shelf life and 
I figure they have to waste it. So they'll get these things out earlier if it is non-GMO. But they're licking their chops at the GMO fruits that are not natural and don't give you any nutrition. You may feel a caloric rush, but that stuff does not connect with your body. Tell me this. If you take the set of house keys that you have and the key that you have for your door to enter your premises and you file part of it down and off, not all of it, just a little part. The way they do with GMO foods and fruits and they change just a little bit at a molecular level. Well, you take that house key and you file down just, let's say, one eighth of an inch of it away or make a new groove and a new little valley out of the peak of the the teeth of the key. Is that key going to work? It no longer fits specifically for that lock to open that door. The same way if you take those molecules at the end and change it around, whichever way, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but they arrange it at at, at the most basic level and you put it in your body, your body is not going to accept that food. And they're gonna make it where soon You know that we can't speak about the reason why we had the mask on in a way that they don't agree. We can't speak about the rainbow people. We have to agree. Soon it's going to be, and listen to me, it's going to be where you can't speak out against GMO foods. And it's going to be where you can't speak about the benefits of eating vegan or any other thing that goes against what they're pushing. It's going to come a time when you push on social media, and especially here on this platform, YT, Whitey, that you won't be able to speak on the benefits, the superior benefits of nature. Because what? This worldwide global demon hates everything natural. But when has black manhood expired? Because now we're hearing that this this monstrosity called Saucy Santana had been dealing with P. Diddy. And what's the other old white man? It it, it slips, slips my brain that they say he had a dealing in the passing of Whitney Houston, that he's been dealing with Diddy. What kind of sick mess is this? Tell me something. Tell me something. Could, well, let's say it this way. Let's let's take away time in the measure of time. Let's bring back The 60s, Malcolm X, let's bring back the 60s, Muhammad Ali, even let's bring back the 60s, Martin Luther King Jr. You can throw some other names in there and I would like to hear from you and what you say in the comment section. But let's imagine They're alive today, not in the older years that they would have been, which is pretty much up there, right, in 2023. But the time of Malcolm and Martin's passing put him right now, the both of them, in Muhammad Ali, the 60s Muhammad Ali, we know he passed in 2016. Rest his soul. But what would they say? about what's going on now. And it's not just about what's going on now as it was gradually coming into play. They would be extremely demonized more than they were back then. They were demonized for the civil rights with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X didn't want no part of that. He wanted to separate. So he was super demonized. And we thought we had troubles and issues back then. 
Not only are those same issues alive and well today in 2023, but we have it where we all have to, according to the society, society and the unspoken word, if we are strong in our manhood, we have to emasculate ourselves just a little bit to, to, to be accepted uh, uh, or to have acceptable levels. If, if you're too strong in your manhood, as a straight black man, you don't even have to say anything against the rainbow people. They despise you. And they're being used in their craziness, getting rights because of the acts that they do. So can we have a group of people who claim to want their rights and we protest because we pick our right nostril with our right finger? <laughs> Can we have rights as a group because we scratch our ass a certain way? When does it end? Because the puppeteer behind it all hates nature. And so I've always said nature was the closest manifestation on this level that we can see to the God force, to the life force, to the creator, to the most high, whatever you want to call it. That thing that prepared this world for us naturally with the mangoes and the watermelons and the fruits and the, and, and the vegetables and all the materials we need to build structures to protect ourselves from the elements. It was like your mother or whoever raised you putting the food in your lunchbox and you open it up. You don't even have to ask. You know that lunchbox was full because it was heavy. And a little piece of home came with you when you were at school. When you opened up that lunchbox and you might have found an extra cookie and was surprised and said, wow, they loved me. They thought about me. They surprised me. This is what our creator did for us on this earth in the, the, in the natural system. But that global demon wants to destroy everything. This is what I'm seeing. I call it a certain name, but understand it's against nature. But it can't win. As big as this earth is. Nobody ever said, let's take a walk and walk around the planet and come home and go to sleep. No, you, <laughs> there's, there's no way you're going to do that. Even if you could, even if you had bridges over the oceans. This place is huge. And I've said this before. If you can freeze time. And I gave you 10 million years to investigate every situation, every household, every story, everything that's going on right now. We freeze time. People are standing there like mannequins. Everything is frozen. Guess what? 10 million years, you don't even have enough time to go around the planet and be nosy and find out everybody's situation. It's huge and there's so much going on. So tell me this. As huge as it is to us, with our comprehension being what it is, we look over the seas, we look over the mountains, we look over the vast terrain that's around us. I don't care how many times or how many countries you've been to. I don't care if you've been to every country in the world, which is over 200 now, right? But within each country, there's a vast amount of things going on. Even if you did that, you still can't be able to enjoy the flavor of every part of this earth. But that's a beautiful thing because you'll never get bored. You'll always reaching. You're always seeing different cultures, different ways of living. It's a beautiful thing. I'm not against other cultures. Hell, within the Africans on the planet, we have so many cultures and ways of the culinary and music and practices before we even go on and explore anything else that pretty much came out of us or they got their stuff from us. But even that, and it seems like this global demon is overtaking everything. Just remember that nature was here. Nature is here. Nature will always be here. So this is like what they're trying to do it seems like they're winning, but they're not. 
You know why? The same time I told you to see how vast this planet is and how huge it is and how most of us will never touch down in every country or taste every cultural uh, uh, amenity and food. Let's flip it. Look how small the planet is when it comes to the universe. The universe that is moving in tandem with the commands of nature. So this little demon takes this little speck of dust and he's working hard to take it over in the mindset. To change around the foods, to change everything around, diametrically opposed to what nature commands. It's fighting an uphill battle. You can't win. Like Rocky's wife said in the movie, you can't win. You can't. You're too small. This is like me taking a teaspoon of sugar and dropping it in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, thinking I'm going to sweeten up the whole ocean. You'll be swallowed up. So know that no matter what they do on the small speck of earth that appears to be huge to us in the short time that we're on this planet, it's long, but it's short at the same time. That they will never beat us. They will never win. So don't feel defeated. Don't bow down to what they want because their, their commands are minuscule. Answer to nature and the God force, the creator, the most high that put you here. That's so much more vast. And if you bow down to this little thing, you're rejecting that one that put you here for the wonderful life that you're supposed to live. And if you're that much of a punk, you don't deserve to enjoy the goodness of our creator forevermore because this is just one dimension. This is just one level. We transition into other things. This is a vast journey. You gonna let this Johnny come lately weak? Individual, people, spirit, entity make you lose your connectedness? So we have these people called pastors and preachers who are supposed to be part of the church and the Catholic church. and They're not spiritual. I mean, on a, on a, on a connectedness to the God force, they're punks because they're not going to talk against what they're supposed to talk against. I bet you if they were alive today, Muhammad Ali, Martin Luther King Jr., and Malcolm X. They would try to assassinate them over and over, of course. But what do you think they would be speaking about? Well, I think that I think a man should live with a man and love a man. If a woman wants to live with a woman and be with a woman, I think it's okay because God Allah would No, he wouldn't say no mess like that. He wouldn't say no mess like that. They had too much backbone. They had too much grit. They had too much strength. They were rooted in what is right. And I'm not trying to convince anybody who wants to live wayward and do all kind of decadence and playing they doo-doo that I'm right and they're wrong. No, go, go right on ahead. I'm not even saying for black people to unify. Go on ahead if you want to be dumb and whatever. It's okay. I have no energy for that. I've been doing this stuff for a long time, y'all, and I'm tired of it. The fact that you try to convince people and hip them to certain things. I don't know everything, but people have taught me, and we have to pass on what we know, no matter what level we're on. We're all professors. We're all scholars. We're all experienced in the ways of this life. We have a right to speak to the generations and even speak back and forth with our elders if they need correction. But what would they do? And what would they say? You tell me what Muhammad Ali would say about this foolishness going on in the world. You tell me what Martin Luther King Jr. would say about the foolishness going on in this world and pushed. You tell me what Malcolm X would speak on. On the decadence that's being pushed. They would have have to they would have had to assassinate them. And so many would go against them no matter how much sense and how much logic is spoken. Because sense and logic 
in today's world is something that has been ruled out. They can convince this world and the people in it to go against nature, the very nature that upholds them, that perpetuates us into the future, that keeps us healthy by the foods we eat, what our creator gave to us. If this world and its wicked agenda could convince us to leave our wholesome house that our God gave us, then something's wrong with us and those who turn their back on nature and the creator all deserve to die.